all right, I'm finally gonna do this. Now I've got other videos up that have like uh, Aura software and I have uh, Precision X or Precision XOC or whatever they call it now. To tell you the truth, I've always considered like if the card is an EVGA card, I would use their software. And if it was, you know, an Aorus card, I would use the Aorus software. But over time and over clocking, I found that one of the biggest things that I had a problem with is that, you know, a founder's card, what do you use? I mean, you can kind of maybe use their software, but MSI Afterburner, when I had an MSI card, once I got used to it, it wasn't an issue. It wasn't like, oh, look at the software, what's all this stuff? Basically, what you want to look at is that there's, a, there's just a few basic simple things to do. One thing is turn the startup off. So that way, if it crashes out, the system reboots, you're not stuck in a loop waiting for the card to finally go back to not being overclocked so your system will come back online. Another thing to do that's going to help you out a lot is set up profiles. In here, there's profiles for, um, like right down here, it'll show them. It won't show it right now, will it? No, it won't because I have this open. Anyhow, so what we're going to do is that give you some key features. And this is, people, if you know what you're doing overclocking, then don't worry about me and this software. This is what I do now versus what I used to do back in the day. Because cards are different. Cards are easier. Everything's easier with software and computers and hardware. Um, it's way different than 20 years ago when I was overclocking a graphics card. And you get you get that oh moment and be like dang. So what you want to do is let's say right now I've got a 2080 super. You got a 2080 super. My 2080 super will do more than what I run it at. It will actually do better than this. So if you look, you see right here I've got a hundred and a thousand. It will do better than that. The only problem is that like on PUBG and the replays it will crash out, but nothing else. I haven't found anything else to. But I don't run it at that. And you notice this is at three is because I run three profiles. I run a profile for 2D, which is just a computer on all the time. The card really doesn't need to be overclocked. But I do go in and I set the, the upper limits for the temperature and the power. And then I save the profile. And I'll get in the profiles in a minute. Because um, the profiles will be important for when you're overclocking. They'll, they'll save you some time and issues. Next is... Once I have this saved on profile one for 2D and desktop like right now, I go in to do my overclock profiles, which you can see there is a huge jump from what there is now to here, right? And I will take these and I will work these till I get them to where they're, they're like probably this profile here. And I will overclock running three programs and none of the games to start with because the games can be so many and so much variance and to sit there and to try to overclock and find your max um, it could take you forever so the best thing to do is just use the three programs I got and get your overclock set in then when you're playing your games if it crashes then you go in and back it down a little bit and what you can do is set up your profile one first and i mean i would just leave it basic i mean it's 2d it's your desktop you don't need the car to be overclocked um but go ahead and let it have it you know the power and temp limits go ahead and push them up um because you're all you're doing is allowing for the card to go a little bit higher in 2d but you're not messing with any overclocks okay next is on the voltages don't mess with them now if your card has dual voltages like most of the cards i have do what I will do is, if it has a, a BIOS 1 and a BIOS 2, I will put it in the BIOS 2 because I know I'm going to overclock the card and run overclock. Now, if it has one for liquid nitrogen cooling, I won't mess with that one because I'm not going to do that with the card, and we're not going to do that today with what I'm going to go into. Um, we're looking at basically easy, overclock, quick, and you're done, and you're up and running, and you're happy, and you're getting, you're getting all your money out of the card. Um, I mean, it's safe to overclock. The cards have built-in protection. If something were happening with the card right after you got it and you overclocked it, there would probably be a defective component on the card and you would have that out of the way and corrected in a new one on the way within the 30 days. Um, otherwise, you should be up and running strong. Now, set your profiles using the 2D 
and working your way up as you run through the programs. And what I would say is start high. I mean, don't slide the slider all the way up. I mean, do a little research on the card. Probably there's somebody out there that's had the card before you, especially like um, some of the YouTubers that get the hardware f first. And they'll give you an idea. And remember, every card is different. Your card may not do 100. It may not do 50. But a lot of times, there's a lot of, what it is, is that you got to look at is all these cards, the manufacturers, they clock them a little bit higher and lower than the others. And they call them a different version, charge a little bit more. So your card may, may be overclocked. Like if I had a For the Win 3 card, which I've had, and then I had a For Win the 3 Ultra card, well, the Ultra card has already got a higher clock than the other for the one three card I had so it's not going to clock as high because it's already clocked higher so these are just things to keep in mind so go ahead and go in here and I would say clock it put a plus a hundred on it plus a thousand on memory and go in and run these programs and typically I'll run probably something like this one first it's pretty quick most of the time the benchmarks makes it through there um, it'll be a crash out black screen then it'll come back to your desktop or you'll see little this flickering lights all around. That means your, your memory is too high. Um, next, if it passes that, then what I'll do in is I'll go ahead and I'll run this one right here, heaven, because this one runs a little bit longer and it allows the card to heat up and get hot. And um, I'll run it not in the basic. I'll run it for the extreme. I didn't, I didn't take it. And if it makes it through that one, then I will go into doing Fire Strike and all that stuff, which I got it right here. I'm do that. And I'll run Time Spy or Fire Strike, usually Time Spy these days with the newer cards. And um, if it makes all three of those, then I might push it a little bit more up until I get it to fail. Now, one of the things is a key factor will save you time too is start with one or the other i usually start with the clock core i'll take the clock core put it 100 run the three benches it makes it through then i'll be happy and then what i'll do is i'll go to the memory and i'll run the memory till it it doesn't make it and i'll back it down and what i'll do is once i get these points right here where this is let's say this is the highest that they will do that is going to be my my 3D overclocking going for like a, uh, a benchmark on Firestar trying to get on a leaderboard. Um, once that's done, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll back them down a little bit. Um, and then I'll run my games. Sometimes I'll keep this profile here if I'm feeling really good about it. The temps are looking good and the fan's not really spinning up. I mean, that's like a lottery GPU, which I've had a few of them. And I might run it at this, but when I was running at this, like I said, I was playing my games, everything's fine. Then all of a sudden PUBG on the replays, it would start crashing out. So then I back it down and usually I'll back these things down. I like to back them down in increments of five, 10 or 25. And, um, for this one here, it just turned out that the card runs really good. There's like a sweet spot to where the card at a certain clock versus a little bit more runs a lot cooler um, and this is the sweet spot where I was happy I was like I'm gonna run this at 750 this is 750 they're perfectly safe you can see it's quite a bit over the standard overclock and it's good um, now one of the things that's a key factor is why I use MSI afterburners because it's it's really good it is I mean you don't really have to worry about all this menu and stuff. All you have to do is go in here, set your profiles, click it, and you're done. Um, and then turn the startup back on. But one of the things is, is that a lot of people ask, like, why is your card doing so well? Well, also, I'll set a custom fan curve. Typically, the fan curve, it's not really much of a curve. But what I'll do is I'll go in here, and I'll go to the 50-50 mark. And I'll set it so it's at 50-50. Okay, so I know the card's at 50% temp, 50% fans. And then I will take the curve and I will take it all the way up to 100. And all the way down to, let's say, fan stop is just below this line right here. I will put it to where the fans actually will stay on all the time. I mean, you can't hear them. I would rather have the fans spinning a little bit, help cooling the card, and help keeping everything cool 
than not spin at all or turning back on and back off, which is annoying. Um, like if you're just in the desktop and you're just doing things and the card spins up a little bit and the fans come on and they go off on it, it's just, it's, I just have them on a little bit. It, it doesn't matter for me. You know, I prefer it that way. Um, once this is saved right here, you're pretty much good to go. You just enable it right here and hit OK. And this is this is pretty much just really simple and basic. I mean, I don't know a whole lot more to say and to do. Is it's it's trial and error. Every system is going to be a little bit different with what you got, um, but it's that easy. And it, it's going to be safe. I mean, don't mess with voltages. Like I said, if the card's got a bio switch for one and two. Then put it to BIOS 2 and let the voltages be controlled by the BIOS within the card, but don't mess with them within the software. That will right there will help save you from messing anything up. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, these two items right here, let that card be able to go as far up as it can to where that the manufacturer cut it off in the BIOS anyways. And then put in your overclocks and save them. Now, when we go into here, we're going to look right here is the profiles. One of the key features about the profiles is that you can see right here, this is going to be 2D, 2D, and this is 3D. Now, one of the key factors is, is that when I'm doing my overclocks, it's not like back in the old school days when, you know, the screen blacked out, computers got to reboot several times to get the card to come back on because it's stuck with the overclock on it and it won't come back and it takes forever to get it back and it's a pain. What happens is that with your 2D profiles, your such your desktop, is you're overclocking with your 3D profile and the program crashes out. You just come back to your desktop. That's it. And you can go back in and just adjust it a little bit and you're good to go. So you don't have to worry about rebooting and stuff like that. Um, that's also another reason why not to put the startup on. So that way if something else fails, startup's not on, you reboot, then the car's gonna come back on, and it's not gonna have the overclocks on it at all because it's back to default. So um, that's, that's about it. I mean, if you guys got any more questions or I didn't cover anything, well, actually there's a little bit more, let's put it like this. So what you've got is you've got another issue. Um, I don't know why people think it helps, but it doesn't really help, it doesn't do anything. I mean, if you're benching, it'll help because the card's already running. Instead of having like, if a benchmark starts to go, and what you have is um, the benchmark going and the card's already revved up. It, it's gonna hit the benchmark already revved up and going. But if the card is spun down and the benchmark start, it's gotta spin up. So basically what it is is that you can hit it, it hit it, you know, running and get a little bit higher numbers. Because when you're benchmarking the cards, um, just a couple numbers mean, means a lot, but in reality, if you're overclocking the card that much and playing games with it, it's like maybe one FPS. That's nothing. It's not worth the temps and the fan noises and stuff like that. So there is your different options. And one of the things I would say is definitely in your global settings, do not go in here and put this to preferred maximum power. Because what's gonna happen is that your car is not going to spin down I and mean, it's, it's always going to be running up and that's the same thing in your your power settings for windows you're going to want to do balanced um you do performance the card won't spin down well you don't want to sit there in 2d right here and have your card spinning up the whole time and you're not even using it for a 3d application you might as well let it spool down and everything cool off and you'll be good to go. So those are those are a couple of things to avoid doing. All right, well, hopefully this is helpful for some of the people I know they're asking for it. And um, I'll see you guys later.